campfires crackled beneath the stars, stoked by a cool wind blowing from the east. The rebel encampment was blanketed by the shadow of a nearby mountain, blocking the bright silver moonlight. Footsteps accompanied the sounds of the dying flames as the captain pushed through the flaps of the largest tent. Is everyone asleep? The gruff voice of an older man sounded from the corner. The face accompanying the question was scarred and pockmarked from years of battling both men and sickness. Furry gray eyebrows scrunched closer together as the amber eyes of the old man waited impatiently for an answer. Of course not. They're all scared to death, the captain said, walking over to a makeshift wooden table where the battle plans were currently being looked over. How's it coming along, sire? A red-robed figure stood over the map, tracing his gloved fingers over the surface. Each time he did, a small orange rune appeared, shimmering as if on fire. Not breaking his concentration, the robed man lifted a single finger, asking for silence as he finished his task. Once the final mark had been made, he took a step back from the table and examined his work. Running his fingers between the curly brown locks of hair, the mage visualized the formations of the battle until the runes on the map came to life. Each one projected a fiery image of two different armies, one marked with the distinct armor of the king's guard, while the other was clad in worn makeshift armor that marked the rebellion. I think I figured it out. The robed figure mumbled as he circled the table, taking in the battlefield from all angles. The captains stood and watched as the leader of their rebellion carefully plotted out their final assault on the king. Looking over to the old man, the two locked eyes for a long moment, silently communicating both their worry and excitement. I don't think you have much to worry about, sire, the captain reassured, moving closer to the table and leaning in close to inspect the magical images of the armies. Your strategies have gotten us this far. All we need is one more victory to take the crown. Your crown. Lifting his eyes from the table, the mage met his captain's gaze, searching as deep as he could for the truth behind his words. Sensing only honesty, his shoulders slumped slightly and he allowed himself to lean on the table. Letting out a deep sigh, the mage lifted a gloved hand to his temple and did his best to rub away the headache that he had been fighting for the past few hours. It's getting late, young master. The gruff voice from the corner chimed in. You'd best try and get some sleep. We need you in top form tomorrow. He's right, sire, the captain chimed in, moving closer and placing a hand on the mage's shoulder. We'll look over the plans and familiarize ourselves. Then we can go over them together in the morning. Looking back and forth between his two closest advisors, the mage nodded his head in agreement before stretching his arms out above his head. I guess you're right, he yawned feeling the siren's call of sleep lull over his body at the thought. Good night. See you both in the morning. The mage walked towards the exit, lifting the worn yellow flap and emerging into the cool night. He took several steps before he heard the sound of voices speaking in low tones behind him, causing him to stop and listen. Do you think we'll live to see another sunset? The old man asked. The mage's heart slowed as worry rippled through his body. Taking a deep breath, he tuned his ears into the conversation, waiting for the captain to answer. With him in charge. The captain paused. I doubt that there's anything we can't do. Despite the bitter cold wind blowing through the camp, the mage felt a warm sense of relief wash over him at his friend's words. Looking up to the stars, he prayed to the gods for strength as he traced constellations in the air with his orange magic. Across the battlefield, the king's guard shimmered in the morning light as their golden armor reflected the sun. Behind them, the high white walls of the city were marked with archers, each one with an arrow in hand, ready to let loose their barrage on command. A raven circled over the king as he sat upon his white horse, watching the troops fall into place as the battle neared its beginning stages. Dull eyes followed the bird as it flew lower perching on a nearby wall and squawking as it cleaned its feathers. His majesty asked dully, turning his head over to the blue-robed wizard next to his side. The ancient caster lifted his head from the scroll he was studying and examined the creature that was idling nearby. Scratching the chin hidden beneath his long white beard, the wizard's mind was too preoccupied with the battle plans to properly investigate the raven. He shook his head, 
once again focusing his attention back to the plans. Doubtful, your highness, he said passively. I believe in true magic, not in superstitions. Accepting his advisor's answer, the king looked back out to the field ahead and took in the view. The rebels had pushed their way through his kingdom's defenses in a short few weeks, though his highly trained soldiers had obviously proved effective enough to cull their numbers. As he sized up the competition, he could feel a pit in his stomach that betrayed the words of encouragement from his most trusted council members. We have sight of their leader, sir, a young voice chimed in, pulling him out of his thoughts. The king looked down to the soldier, who had an ornate golden spyglass extended out to him. Taking it into his hands, his majesty followed the pointed finger of the soldier and looked through the scope. Which one is he? the king asked, scanning the back line of the rebel forces until he stopped at a group of three men mounted on horses that looked as if they hadn't eaten in days. Our sources say he's the one in red. Taking a closer look, his majesty stared at the young man in red mage's robes that was looking down at his own parchment of battle plans. He's young and a mage, the king noted. Too bad he's not a cleric, the wizard chuckled. Why's that? the aged monarch questioned, raising an eyebrow. Because he's going to need a miracle to save himself and his men from the mines we've planted in the field. A sharp look of concern flashed over the king's face, followed quickly by a question. Our men know to avoid the mines? The wizard waved a hand in dismissal. Of course, they've been instructed to avoid the areas that have been dug up on the field and try to force the enemy into them. Letting out a sigh of relief, the king allowed himself to relax. Good, he said. Let's make sure that everyone is in position. It's almost time. With his final words uttered, the raven let out another squawk and took flight once more. Across the battlefield, the red-robed mage blinked several times to sever the magical connection to his raven familiar. His vision cleared and focused back on the battle map he had been pretending to look at. What did you see? his captain asked from his right. The red-robed mage made eye contact with his friend and smiled. I saw the future, he joked. And? Do we win? The mage nodded his head, letting the smile that had formed on his face fade into pure focus as his mind adjusted his strategy. Get behind me, your majesty, the wizard shouted as he began conjuring a wall of protective magic. I wouldn't do that! The red-robed mage shouted back as he lobbed a small ball of flame into the air above the enemy caster. The ball grew several times its size on the short trip to its destination, reaching the ceiling of the throne room before detonating a pillar of flame that engulfed the wizard. The king watched as the outline of his magical advisor turned to dust as the inferno singed his material body from existence. By the time the flame subsided, there was little more than ash left along with a large hole burning through the ancient ceiling of his castle. Looking out into the throne room, the king watched as the red-robed mage made quick work of his royal guardsmen. He could feel his heartbeat throughout his body and tried to fight off the dread that had been setting in ever since his forces had failed to hold off the rebels earlier that morning. Retreating back to the throne that sat at the far end of the room, the king looked up to the stained glass window that was casting its multicolored light across the bloodied floor. The sounds of battle faded away as he tracked his royal lineage through the images that were set in the glass. When his eyes finally rested on his own image, telling the story of his many triumphs of war, he let out a deep sigh. Are you ready to surrender or do you want to fight till the end? A young voice called out from a few feet behind him. The king turned, locking eyes with the red mage. His enemy's eyes filled with flames, the burning desire to conquer at all costs. The very same eyes he likely had when he was the same age, leading war campaigns across the neighboring kingdoms. Taking a deep breath, the king steeled his resolve and shifted his feet into an aggressive stance as he raised his sword. To the death, he answered, charging forward. The red mage smiled, raising his wooden staff and taking aim at the king's chest. Within seconds, all that was left of the old monarch was the partially melted crown that clattered to the ground. Picking it up with his gloved hand, the mage turned it over in his hand several times before looking back at his men. Battered and beaten in every way, still they stood, having done what was thought impossible by many. The captain and old man exchanged glances, then looked at the red mage and nodded their approval. With a single motion, 
The mage lowered the hot crown onto his head, feeling the comfortable weight of power settle through his body as he relished in the moment of achievement.